Welcome to my thought for the day for the 13th of January 2023. Uh, be, the Church of England's lectionary offers up six choices of reading for today. There are four psalms and there's one reading from each of the Old and New Testaments. And, and the lectionary gives a stern warning to readers and especially to the potentially errant clergy not uh, automatically to go to the usually rather more palatable readings from the New Testament, but to ensure that the Old Testament gets a good look in, even if those readings do seem to be a bit full of a God of judgment and wrath. So, so mindful of that warning, I, I turned to the Old Testament offering from today's lectionary, which is uh, from Amos 5. However, this, this was entitled A Lament and a Call to Repentance, and uh, ends with the words, Therefore, this is what the Lord, the Lord God Almighty, says, There will be wailing in all the streets, and cries of anguish in every public square. The farmers will be summoned to weep, and the mourners to wail. There will be wailing in all the vineyards, for I will pass through your midst, says the Lord. Well, I, I can't say that appealed too much in a uh, six-minute uh, thought for today's slot. So, ignoring the lectionary reading, I turned eagerly to the passage of hope that that's, a, that's the New Testament. And the lectionary reading here was from 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And this is from St Paul's first letter to Corinthians in a passage where he reflects on the nature of true discipleship. And there's some wonderful stuff here. What discipleship may mean, uh, being condemned to die in the arena, a spectacle to the whole universe be seen as a fool or as weak and being dishonoured, being left in rags and treated brutally. But despite all this, Paul says, as disciples we must work. When we are cursed, we must bless. When we are persecuted, we must endure. And when we are slandered, we must answer kindly. So it's all wonderful stuff, albeit a bit deep. So I turn then to the Psalms listed in the lectionary, and here, unusually, there are four uh, for today, Psalms 62, 72, 88 and 95. Well, nothing jumped out at me from Psalms 72 or 62, so I moved on to Psalm 88, which was stunningly startling, shocking and worrying. <laughs> it makes a passage from Amos seem positively light and airy. Uh, and one commentary describes Psalm 88 as the bleakest, most uncomfortable psalm. Why, it asks, is this psalm in our Bibles? How can something so dark be edifying for believers today? And in fact, the word bleak doesn't really do justice to Psalm 88. The psalm describes a person deep in torment, crying out for help, for a sign. Well, that of itself is not unusual in the psalms, but what is unusual is that in Psalm 88 that cry for help seems to go unanswered. The psalmist receives no help, no sign. There is no final message of hope. Instead, the psalm ends in despair. Instinctively, I shy away from that and for a thought for the day, and I turn to the last lecture reading, which is Psalm 95. Now it starts, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. So is this some sort of bizarre joke by the lectionary? Why so different? Why Psalm 88 and Psalm 95? But it sparked a thought in me, and maybe you want to go back and look again at Psalm 88 and to draw a, draw a link also with the passage from Corinthians. They all describe parts of our Christian lives, and Christianity and faith is not all, not all about joy and singing. As Paul said uh, to the Corinthians, there will be times when we feel that we are, and we've been treated as fools. And there will be times of suffering, times when we feel abandoned. So I will read Psalm 88, the bleakest of all the Psalms, and when at the end all seems dark and abandoned, I'll go straight on and read the first part of Psalm 95. So Psalm 88. Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles and my life draws near to death. I am accounted amongst those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. I am set apart with the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave whom you remember no more, who are cut off from your care. You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths your wrath lies heavily on me. You have overwhelmed me with all your waves, you have taken from, from me my closest friends and have made me repulsive to them. I am confined and cannot escape, my eyes are dim with grief, I call to you Lord every day. I spread out my hands to you, do you show your wonders to the dead? Do their spirits rise up and praise you? Is your love declared in the grave, your faithfulness is in destruction? Are your wonders known in the place of darkness, or your righteous deeds in the land of oblivion? But I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? 
From my youth I have suffered and been close to death. I have borne your terrors and am in, in, in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. All day long they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. You have taken me from me, friend and neighbour. Darkness is my closest friend. Then Psalm 95 starts with the following words. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands form the dry land come. Let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. There cannot be much of a greater contrast between these psalms. Yet, as I've said, these all reflect parts of our Christian journey. And it seems to me that we cannot and should not ignore or gloss over the fact that there are times when we will feel despair. We will feel abandoned. We will feel that God is ignoring us and not listening to our prayers. The fact that we have such feelings does not make us bad Christians. And Jesus himself on the cross cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And it seems to me that Psalm 88 was included in the Bible for a reason. It describes feelings that many devout Christians have felt and who have suffered. Any, anyone who's read the poetry of Jeremy Hopkins, a Catholic priest, will find poems mirroring both Psalms 95 and also Psalm 88. So yes, there is joy. There is a fabulous message of hope and redemption. But if we pretend, pretend that faith and Christianity and our lives on earth are always about joy, then it seems to me that we are deceiving ourselves. And we are unlikely to be able to convince others that we have a truth worth listening to. There will be suffering, as Paul told the Corinthians, we must expect that suffering and respect it in others. There will be times of the darkest despair, times when we're all we seem to have, like the psalmist in Psalm 88, is darkness as a friend. Again, we must expect that despair and respect it in others. But there is also joy in the fact that we are saved and in the Christian message. Again, that is a joy which we should expect and one which we need to share with others. Amen.